Hi guys, so today I'm here to tell you a little bit about carbon nanotubes. What does it mean, nano? How small are they really? Nano means 10 to the power minus 9, smaller than, uh, than a meter. Which means that if a single long nanotube, which usually is 1.5 nanos uh, thick and 5 micros uh, long, if it would be as thick as a pencil, which is only 7 millimeters, you would need the pencil to be 23 meters long. So you can imagine how long would it be, half, almost half uh, an Olympic pool. Let's try to compare it with something that we know, hair, for example. So on, on average, the human hair is around 70 microns. If we get back to the pencil example, and nanotubes are now as thick as a pencil and 24 meters long, how many would we need? We would need around 14 of these really long pencils, one after the other, in order to get to the thickness of, of, uh, of a hair. So if we were at this scale, a hair would be the thickness of around 300 meters, so like three football fields. You can now have an idea that this is just the length of the nanotube, so you can imagine how thin they really are. And why are carbon nanotubes interesting at all? It's because they have very nice properties, so they are electrically conducted, thermally conducted, and they are super strong. You can see them as wrapped graphene, so if you take graphene, so when graphene was discovered, it was like if you take um, graphite, you know graphite pencils, and you peel it off, literally if you take, um, if you take uh, tape and you peel off layers of atoms, eventually you will reach graphene, it just matters. It just depends on how you want to define graphene, one, two, three layers of, of carbon atoms, and the way ca carbon atoms are disposed, uh, it makes them really interesting. So they can conduct electricity, conduct heat, and nanotubes are then electrically conducted. So that's why people are interested in nanotubes, that's why there is research going on. It's because you can use them, mixing them with other materials like plastics, because you cannot build with nanotubes, you cannot build one thing just made out of nanotubes. They are too small for it, so you need to mix them with other materials. And then you can add new properties to these materials, like plastics. Plastics are non-conductive usually, not electrically conductive, and non thermally conductive. And you can add new properties, make them also stronger. So that's why so many people are now interested in spending money, and there is so much fuss around it. So today I'm going to show you a little experiment, just for you to understand what does it mean to be small in practice. And uh, also some little small safety precautions. So if you want to work with nanotubes, you should wear, for example, a mask. Like this one, or like this one, which is even better. And good glasses too, of course. And gloves. You should not forget the gloves, of course. So why should you care about these kind of safety issues? It's because nanoparticles are so small and so light that they just stay in the air, and if you breathe them, they can go into your bloodstream. And you don't want that, because you don't know what can happen. No one knows. I mean, they're studying it, but basically carbon is not harmful. The problem are the other remaining particles of substances of catalysts and so on that trigger reactions, so you don't know what they're going to do in your body. It's better to avoid it. So, the first thing is to always work in a place with ventilation, so just to minimize the intake, uh, the possible intake, and then afterwards you can turn on the air, the ventilation, the exhaust. And I mean after, because if you use it during, the particles are so light that if you keep the ventilation on, they will flow around, and you can see this, for example, now I have the ventilation on, if I want to close my window, you know, it, it starts, all starts just flying around, which is obviously not wanted. So, the first thing is to close it and leave the air off, so don't turn on the ventilation, please. And what I also advise is to use this kind of wet paper bag, so to say, so that if any particles, if they drop on the, on the, on the pavement here, they will stay, they will stick to the paper and then you can easily clean off everything. And if the white paper becomes black, you know that you got some particles, so it's quite easy. So now I'm going to mix a little bit of nanotubes with water. Basically, just do it carefully, so you know now they can be free. So try not to do a lot of uh, quick movements. And be fast when you do it. Close everything again, and you know that it's going to be alright.
I'm trying to mix it the best that I can with this wooden stick. And now I just put it here where it's wet so that I don't have any particles flying around. And as you can see, there are still huge agglomerates of nanotubes lying in the water. So the dispersion is not good at all. And what I'm doing here now is uh, ultrasonication. So basically, this device, this, the tip of, the, of this device uh, emits ultrasonic waves, which leads to this cavitation process. So it's like you are inputting energy into the water and due to the cavitation, there, there are shear forces and you will see what this means in practice. So basically, now you can see that the color changed dramatically. It's clearly darker than before. I don't know if you can notice that there are actually visible some agglomerates, but the main idea is that we were able to, to rupture, to destroy some of the initial agglomerates, even though it was quite short. So just a couple of seconds, maybe one minute, of uh, ultrasonic action has had uh, a huge difference in the dispersion quality. So what was the point of this experiment? Basically, if you noticed, I used a very, very small amount of nanotubes. So it was less than 0.01 grams, maybe 0.003 grams from the amount that I used in about 100 uh, milliliters of water. Anyways, you can see how black it became and that in the beginning this was not the case. Why? The thing is that due to the way that nanotubes are processed, it's called chemical vapor deposition, basically you have a very, very uh, warm gas, rich in carbon, which deposits carbon atoms in a substrate. So the nanotubes grow, like kind of like in a forest, and because the way they are grown, they become all entangled. So basic, when you buy nanotubes, you are not really buying tubes, you are buying agglomerates of nanotubes. So once these agglomerates are broken, you are able to get single nanotubes. And nanotubes, as I told you, they are very long, they are, have a huge area huge aspect ratio, which means that this surface area uh, becomes then in contact with the water, so you have an increase of surface area when you break the agglomerates, which leads to the color black. So they are black, they absorb all the light, if they are in agglomerates, you don't have enough area to absorb the light, but if they are broken, if they are loose and nanotubes, then things become black. So this is to underline one fundamental problem of the use of nanotubes, which is you need to break the agglomerates, otherwise you don't have single nanotubes. You just have huge blocks of nanotubes, which are not really useful, because they lose all the nice properties. So thank you very much for watching, hope you enjoy. Please follow our project, the link. You can check the link here. And uh, let us know if you have any questions, anything, just write us on Facebook, Twitter. Take care and be safe.